We have a lot of bugs that we're rolling through. Are these bees? Yeah, no, they're, they're bees. Is anybody allergic? I recently rode a tandem in LA with a stranger. Well, not a complete stranger. I was a guest on her podcast, Presta Story Valve, but we never met in person till this day. I think Amy is pretty great, and I hope you guys enjoy the ride. So we're here in Sunny, 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 Sunny. Why can't I say Sunny? <laughs> sunny, Southern California. So I met this young lady, Amy. She actually suggested doing it on a tandem. I was like. That's an awesome idea. I love that idea. I actually have a tandem and let's do it. I really commend you for like, you know, saying like, I never met you in person, but like, let's hop on a tandem together. We're gonna do it on the LA River Trail. There are some other obstacles we might encounter today. I feel like we're running through a war zone right now. I hope you're filming this, Dara. And I'm gonna let you know like, who's behind the camera so you can kind of see what's going on here. Tara sitting on the back and then Asia in the front. So I actually don't know exactly where we're going, but I think we're just gonna head west, yeah. West, that's all what, we need to know. What, what was that quote? Something, head west, some? <laughs> that's kind of how you got into bikes too, just rolling into it and just like jumping into it. And I, that's what I wanna kind of explore today a little bit, just getting out there and doing it and just having an experience. We haven't ridden this bike together yet. Wish us luck. <laughs> if you wanna hop on first and then I'll, I, I think, is that the right way to do it? You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Okay. Oh, sorry. I should have told you where we're going. This is a good sign. No hands. And Tara, another check-in. <laughs> All right, so I guess we need to let Tara know when we're going down a hill. That's the freak out moment. But it's an adventure. I guess that's kind of how it is on a bike too though. Things feel a little weird sometimes but then you get more comfortable. You, you put yourself out there and you do it. I think that was one of the things that kind of intrigued me about you, Amy, is that uh -huh. you just kind of like jumped into it. I guess you approach a lot of your life like that. <laughs> there are certain things that I'm okay with jumping into without giving it any thought at all. And I think with cycling, for example, it, it is one of those things where you can only say so many words about it before you just have to get on a bike and ride. People I found in the bike community, I feel like a lot of people have that spirit, but it like doesn't stay just to bikes only. They kind of have that spirit with a bunch of other things. And I just really like that. Because for you, I guess one of the big things, like getting into maybe bike commuting initially, why, why you kind of got into it? I was just living very simply. I was working as a bike mechanic, which doesn't pay a ton of money. I was moving around a lot in Los Angeles and just getting settled here, which kind of can cost an arm and a leg. <laughs> I just considered bike commuting more because I didn't want to pay for gas. It was about, I think about a 10 and a half mile bike ride the night before I decided okay I'm just gonna bike into work and see what happens and I was like very mentally prepared to do it. I mean for a lot of people like bike commuting in LA seems like a crazy idea. So I was just kind of like well if it only takes maybe 15 extra minutes on my bike to get to work versus driving and sitting into like bumper to bumper traffic in Los Angeles and just dealing with all that gridlock. Biking is pretty doable all of a sudden. It's accomplishing two things at once. I'm getting to work and I'm exercising at the same time. That's a pretty efficient use of time, even that you know, extra 15 minutes, but you're, you're getting so much more out of it. And not to mention, I imagine there's some benefits, you know, just like psychologically, you know, mental health and that sort of thing. Even if we had a really crappy day at work, in the immediate moment, you feel really tired and exhausted. You're like, oh my gosh, I still have to bike home. Like, how am I going to bike? Truly, after you get on the bike and pedal a few hundred feet, you completely forget. And so by the time I get to my, to my front door, I, I, I honestly have forgotten a lot of crap that I had in my head all day about yeah. work. Like, I just forget. <laughs> I think it's because you have to kind of be uh, present with what you're doing and focused on what you're doing. So getting back to that first experience, for most people knowing LA as being so car centric and that sort of thing, were you able to find like a reasonably safe route? Like what, what was that no. experience like? <laughs> the first route that Google Maps gave me was pretty terrible. During the ride, I did think, why did Google Maps tell me to go this way? <laughs> it was pretty bad. It was through a combination of just like looking at the other options that Google Maps suggested to me 
And also talking to people who uh, biked as well. You lived in Portland for a while. Very different bike infrastructure there. Very, very. But you didn't bike there too much. You did a little bit. Yeah, I did just a little bit. I had gotten into riding a bike there just because I was honestly tired of taking the bus. I used to work in downtown Portland. During the winters, a lot of people are sick on the bus and it just kind of grossed me out. Right. So after a while, I decided to buy a bike just so I wouldn't have to take the bus. In the winter? Yeah. <laughs> right. Which is actually kind of interesting in a lot of ways when you think about it. Like the climate makes so much sense here, but I think the infrastructure and, and perhaps the culture mm -hmm. is one of the more limiting factors, especially these days. I, I think that a lot of people probably had a similar feeling. We have a lot of bugs that we're rolling through. I don't know what, are these bees? Yeah, no, they're, they're bees. They're totally bees. Is anybody allergic? All right. Yeah. That was, you got one on your shoulder right now, Tara. Oh, you do? Come on. Yes. Hop on. Let's do it. All right, we made it to the beach. Just do you guys want to pull sand. over here for just a moment? Stop and, and, and take in that, Regroup. that we made it. Nobody Regroup. fell so far. <laughs> Adjust to the fact that we just went through a whole bee swarm. There's nothing chill about riding a bike in LA. <laughs> no. I woke up with this idea this morning. I feel like bikes need a rebrand. Bikes are branded like a certain way in the US and mm -hmm. they're branded a totally different way in say like Europe. And I think that people in America, they generally think it's like something for recreation or something for sport and not necessarily something for transportation. Bikes need to be rebranded as, I think she just lost a bee. Did you, you get stung? You have, you have, Did you get stung? Oh, you, oh, you, oh, have, you have more, you have, okay. you have more. They really got attracted Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're part of the bee trauma response team. They really stuck with you. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you... I don't know what it was. Are you Australian? Australian? I am. I think they like the Australian Maybe blood. They're... How is it biking around so far? Nice. Like, I'm used yeah. to it. Like, Australia is pretty bike friendly. So yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. The person oh, yeah. with the baby? Can we tell us? Oh, yeah. Miss? All right, Amy's gonna go save the day. So there's a ton She's of like, bees. you're a crazy person. So I just wanted to let uh, you know, like, we had just biked about? through. Yeah. Amy, oh, no, she Amy cares. did you tell her to be careful? <laughs> I did. Not like that. That's not my I joke. That I was did. Tara's. That was a good one, though. She seemed pretty nonchalant about yeah. my Bigger warning. So I'm, I'm slightly more concerned about you, strange person in a helmet, <laughs> walking up to me than, uh, than the bees. Yes! So. You know what? That's another thing. I feel like cyclist to cyclist, people are super open. But if you're in any That's other insane. situation, people won't talk to you. I really wonder what that is. I mean, I think to some extent, People on bikes are generally ones to be more open just to like put themselves out there, to be like vulnerable. We're talking about like trust stuff and being like vulnerable or just connection in general. Like yeah. sometimes it's even just a facial expression that you can can connect with somebody. All right, so we were talking for a moment about this rebrand thing. If somebody said like Target was to sell like luxury cars or something like that, you say, well, it doesn't really fit their brand. Like that's not in line with that. Mm -hmm. But I think there's like certain aspects of biking, particularly in America that like people can't like wrap their heads around that. You know, I think you need the mix of like the people who will just do it regardless. And then eventually people will follow. Cause I, I think that's how anything. Are we still in that phase? I think, I think maybe it's, varies depending on cities, right? Like yeah. Portland, for example, I think we're beyond the early adopter phase. Yeah. In LA, I think we're still probably in the early adopter phase. Where the infrastructure is and where people's comfort zone, there's a, there's a pretty big disparity right. right now. So places like Portland that have excellent infrastructure, mm -hmm. then it's like, hey, if it's a, you know, an eight year old that doesn't have that much experience and wants to bike to school, like they can do it and, and their parent might feel confident in doing that. Like there's a part of me that's like, okay, what can we do with what already exists and get more people on the road at the same time? I mean, yeah, where I does that drive come from, right? Because because you seem to be pretty driven to to do it. Uh -huh. Was it just that initially I didn't want to be on that dirty bus, or was it like it's deeper than that? Truly, initially I think it was because I really didn't want to be on the bus. Yeah. But very, very, very quickly after just riding my bike a few times, you kind of get hooked in terms of like enjoying that carefree feeling. A while back, I was talking to one of my coworkers about feeling like a little kid and things that happen that make you feel like a little kid as we're, you know, get older and as we're adults. So for him, one of those things was like getting spooked or getting scared when, you know, that makes you feel like a little kid. Do people in, watch in horror movies way? for that <laughs> reason? Like, I don't know, maybe. But, but <laughs> I think another feeling, honestly, is riding a bike and just that feeling of pedaling like really fast. Yeah. and just kind of 
being like, wee, you know? Like, I mean, for example, if we were to ride on this path, maybe if there were less people or something, and we just pedaled really, really fast, I yeah. feel like that would really bring back a nostalgic feeling of being a kid. So that's actually an interesting point though, right? So, so being spooked, and so perhaps actually riding in a place like LA where it can be a little bit dicey at times, there, there could be a certain benefit to that. Why, why do people bungee jump or skydive mm -hmm. or, you know, do these things yeah. to some extent, like having that thrill, like being, being close to it, maybe that helps you appreciate life to some extent. It gets back to what you actually did for, for a living for a period of, mm -hmm of the bike share system. What, what's your feeling on that? I don't really care, I'm gonna put it out there. I'm 40 years old and I became a bike mechanic when I was like, I think I was like 36 or 37 when I did it. And I just thought it was like the coolest thing to do. I was, it was such a fun like shift in my life. I always worked in corporate before. And so I just, I guess cannonball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's a cannonball move. <laughs> Where I'm like, I don't want to work in like a corporate environment anymore. I was just like really unhappy for a lot of different reasons. And so when I transitioned back here, I was just like, well, you know what? Like I'm going to just take this little like window of time to really do something that just felt like something enjoyable that I wanted to do that felt a little bit or a lot more fulfilling to me than like the work I was doing prior. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. I think of anything in my life, that's probably one of like the big highlights of it. All right, so we're gonna start out in a slightly different scenario here with cars. Okay. But the ladies had the choice between bees and cars and they chose cars. So hopefully we made the right choice. Choose your own adventure sort of thing here. Go ahead, let's do it. There we go, rolling. Okay, we'll just take this lane. You know what though? I think we're on a highway. Are we? Asia, let's hop over to the right. This is actually like a bike lane. This is the bike lane. Very unrecognizable. <laughs> yeah, it's not really the nicest bike lane. For a lot of people's standards, this would not be acceptable, safe bike infrastructure. I mean, I appreciate that we have this and we have these kind of plastic barricades, but yeah. the reality is they don't offer that much protection. So we got some campers. Some of them seem to be pushing up in the bike lane a little bit. Taking the lane, let's do it with her. Let's do it? Whoa, whoa, okay, hold on. Let's do it now, okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right, full speed ahead. Go, go, go. <laughs> I guess they don't realize that this is, well, I guess it's no longer a bike lane if this is just camping. Lots of camping. Like, go left real quick. Are we doing the... Yeah, yeah. No, they have a left turn. They have a left turn. Yeah, I got it. I got okay. it. No worries. Sorry. So I think our first objective is to get across the street when there's no car traffic. Hopefully that condition will happen okay the lights turning red up there so it should soon turn let's just cork the road and just do it just do it we are... okay i feel like we're running through a war zone right now <laughs> hope you're filming this guy this is this is what we deal with this is la for you you could do better you could do better la Okay, we made it. Nobody got hurt. This is like some of the safer places to ride around. Cause you had the experience of riding in New York. Mm -hmm. I'm always catching her like mid drink, right? It's actually New York is a much nicer place to ride than, than LA. Sorry I keep on bashing on LA, but I think there's a great opportunity here. And I think sometimes you need to like get jolted into uh, feeling like you got to do something, you know? Like since I feel like I really became a cyclist here in Los Angeles, and this is what I have to work with, I just kind of make do with this. So you just never know when you're in LA, when your bike ride is all of a sudden gonna turn into a duathlon and you're doing a little bit of like, <laughs> running with your bike. <laughs> it's, it's a good opportunity to show where we need improvement. Mm. And that's a lot of times what it is. It's like, it's those little sections though. It's like, okay, yeah, this is all amazing. Like what we're riding on is great. Like the, the biggest threat of being run over is removed. But then when you have those occasional encounters, it kind of makes everything else not so appealing. With what happened just today with us, with the bees, yeah. and then the alternative was treacherous. It's not, not too many way. other options. Yeah. I mean, 
you could try to ride the bike in the water, but that wouldn't work too well. <laughs> I guess you could probably take like a super long route. Maybe you could go like a couple miles out of the way. Yeah. When I didn't like the ones that Google Maps had given me the first few times I went for the alternative route, it tacked on an extra mile and a half onto my commute. I don't know, to me it was just worth it. So you're like, hey, you know what, if it's extra 15, 20 minutes, some people are just not willing to take that extra time, you know? Time is a very interesting thing in America compared to other countries. Like in a rush to go home and like sit on Instagram yeah, it's just while like, we're what, watching a TV it, show and not really watching it. Yeah. But you could be like out like getting some vitamin D and <laughs> interacting with the community. Back on the roller coaster. <laughs> Hi. What is that? <laughs> See, there you go. Interaction, right? Like connection. Uh, are you familiar with the Ciclavias that are here? Oh yeah. In LA? So just for, for those that are not familiar with Ciclavia, can, can you just explain a little bit about that? I forget how many miles of road are closed off. Yeah, I think it's, it's usually like 10, 20 miles or something like that, right? Or, I think it might be a little bit shorter. Okay, say it's 10 miles or something like that, but a large section of LA is shut down. And then it's car free for those miles and so people can come out on their bikes they it's can amazing walk, how many run. people come out though right yeah it's, yeah the, the streets all of a sudden just become flooded with people yeah and i think that that's really you know speaks more to that infrastructure things like if you build it they will come if if you have the space uh people will use it you know so you were talking about the bike kitchen at Ciclovia. Yeah, so the bicycle kitchen, it was started by a guy named Jimmy, like in his kitchen where he was just like working on bikes and getting together with friends and whatnot. Then he ended up starting this space. It's a nonprofit too, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a nonprofit educational space where people can come and learn bike mechanics. They can learn how to fix their bikes. They could build up a bike. It's a really good place to meet and connect with very different types of people. Let's see if we can make this turn here. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> did it. I hope that you don't have less trust in me as a result of our activities today. No, nope, all the um, same. <laughs> we, we did all right. It was pretty fun doing a, like an e-bike, an e-tandem. Just, I guess in, in closing, one is like, is there anything else you want to share? And then I'll also have you just share about your, your podcast and maybe like what you're, where you're looking to go with that. I mean, I do hope that anyone who's out there who's timid about starting to ride a bike to just definitely do it. There are so many community organizations and groups and people who are really open to wanting to connect with new riders. I've been that new person so many times in so many different ways where I'm like, you know, you have that self-conscious feeling of being like, oh, I'm the new clumsy person. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but I've come across the nicest, most helpful, supportive people. And so I think that if that's what's holding you back, don't let it just, yeah. you know, like truly take that first step and just connecting with an organization like a nonprofit and just like letting them know and they will go so far out of their way to help you. As I mentioned in the beginning, Amy has a podcast. Press the Story Valve podcast. So I started it uh, very recently. I love podcasts and I love bikes and I love bike people and I loved hearing people's bike stories. And so I just married those two together and I created Press the Story Valve podcast. Take a listen. Uh, it's found on most popular platforms and yeah, follow along on Instagram. Definitely reach out. Thank you so much. You're awesome. <laughs> Uh, this was amazing. I really couldn't ask for anything better, you know, maybe a little bit less bees, but outside of that, uh, it was a good time and hopefully you guys enjoyed and look forward to seeing you soon. Well, take care.